Here it is again. Hello, this is Buona from Buona.tv, and today I want to answer a question from my email. This one came from my email and not Twitter and not YouTube. And let me turn my phone off because I guess you guys don't want to hear that buzzing. So, Mr. Zinkitigo, Zinkro, Zinkro, asked me a question. And he asked it on email. He said, What is the difference between a dual core and a dual processor? In your opinion, which is better? Thanks again, Mr. McCall. We all owe you one. He always calls me Mr. McCall. So, Zinkro. The difference between a dual core and a dual proc are uh, it's kind of evolving. What the, what the physical difference is, a dual core is you have two CPUs on the same processor, or two cores is what they call them. They refer to your CPU as a core, and they put them on the same die. Uh, a dual processor is two physical independent CPUs which sit on your motherboard. You have two slots for each, or you have one slot for each processor, whether you have a dual processor required, whatever you may have. And those processors are assigned their own resources. They get their own memory, they get their own bus, they, you know, they're independent in terms of resources. Whereas on a dual core, both of your CPUs are on the same processor. Therefore, they have to share they have to share the memory bandwidth. They have to share other resources on the architecture. That's that's the simplest way I can put it. Is that one shares resources while the other has its own dedicated. Now that's hardware related. When you take it up to software, software, it I mean the to get to get benefit out of either dual core or either dual proc, your software has to know about it and be able to take advantage of it. Now back in the day when dual procs were very very popular, before this dual core came thing dual core thing even came out. A lot of us ran Linux and we compiled it in a certain way to support multiprocessors. It was called SMP. And that would enable Linux to assign certain processors or certain processes to one processor and other processes to another. Um, and there are some other things that went on, but this is all high level stuff I'm talking about. There's exceptions, there's all kinds of all kinds of stuff going on. But you know the software had to be aware of it now in today's world where dual core kind of rules everything dual core is kind of a cheaper way and I say cheaper meaning price wise but you do sacrifice that that independent resource thing it's a way to um, it's a cheap way to get the same same effect but in order to utilize dual core the software needs to be multi-threaded I'm pretty sure you've heard of this particular term. Multi-threaded means that your program is written in a fashion to where it knows you have multiple cores present. It will make use of those cores, meaning that it'll run in multiple threads. So one thread can go on one core and another thread can go on another core. So this day and age right now, not a whole lot of heavy programs such as games, that's one of the heaviest things we can think of, are multi-threaded. Now some are really, they're, they're, they're going towards that. A lot of games are multi-threaded. You can Google and see which games are multi-threaded, but they're kind of moving towards that. Uh, so if you have a dual core, you know, a lot of multi-threaded processes include things like video encoding. And uh, there are some other scientific, uh, scientific applications that are multi-threaded and they can take advantage of multi-core Systems. A perfect example would be this is this is actually a perfect example. The PlayStation 3. If you go on your PlayStation 3 right now and you install Ubuntu Linux, it's not optimized to utilize all those cores and all of the graphics power that it has. So it may not be as fast as you think it might be. But if you run a scientific application, such as um, uh, SETI at Home, that's the name of it. SETI at Home, or there's all kinds of other scientific applications does PlayStation 3 screams. It, it, it's, it's just the fastest thing on the planet. So that is a good example of, you know, dual core really shining and the software matching. Now with that said, my recommendation is I believe that the future is dual core, obviously. There's not a lot of application on the client or end user side for multiprocessor. Uh, most multiprocessor machines are now on server ends. Um, 
and uh, you, you'll you'll see a lot of heavy 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 uh, hardware like the Mac Pro which has dual quad core so with that you're mixing both worlds you got two CPUs each of which has four miniature computers on it so that's dual quad core which gives you eight cores but it's each one of those processors has its own resources you see what I mean what in the beginning about dual processor that first core has its own resources and the second core has its own resources now the architecture may have changed since I understood it but that's the way I understand it is that you get a, a, a huge benefit by having resources dedicated to a particular processor and then put multi cores on top of it so they're kind of combining the two technologies um, so if you go out and, search, uh, uh, and you go out and you get a Nehalem processor and you see that you can get either get one processor with multi cores or you can get two processors with multi cores now you kind of know the difference each one of those processors will have their own resources and your software has to take advantage of it that's why so many people are, are so uh, so adamant about 64-bit because it can address so much memory to to supply to those processors so 64-bit really shines um, same with 64-bit Vista you have the ability to to do that now all of this is contingent on the task scheduler and scheduling task and blah 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 so much more to it but that ought to get you started in knowing the differences between a uh, dual core and a dual processor physically they're on separate processors they're called dual processor but they're on, if they're multiple multiple cores on the same die or the same processor then it's called dual or multi-core so Zinkro I hope I answered your question on what's the difference which is better I can't really say because it depends on the application uh, but for more most end-user applications I, I would say multi-core is the best since not a lot of software still not a lot of software is taking advantage of multi-threading but until that day comes you'll see me uh, recommend dual core since it's cheaper all right this is one from one.tv zinc thanks for the question and i hope you send some more that was a good one